back where it was. Right there. Perfect. Fantastic doctors and nurses. There you go. Move it around and put it right back where it was. I'm right there. Perfect. I'm thrilled to be here in North Carolina with so many of these unbelievable professionals, doctors, nurses, and amazing healthcare workers. Really an honor of mine. As the world witnessed during our battle against the China virus, America has the greatest medical professionals anywhere on Earth. Today, I will lay out my vision for a healthcare system that puts patients first, families first, and perhaps most importantly for all of us, America first. That's what, Thank doctor, you. can you take a look at my America? Yeah, it's, it's feeling a little down. Like Under it is the torn apart first right down plan, the middle. We will ensure the highest standard of care anywhere in the world, cutting edge treatment, state of the art medicine, groundbreaking cures, and true health security for you and your loved ones. And we will do it rapidly, and it's in very good order, and some of it has already been implemented. In short, we're delivering better care with more choice at a much lower cost and working to ensure Americans have access to the care they need. My plan expands affordable insurance options, reduces the cost of prescription drugs, will end surprise medical billing, increases fairness through price transparency, streamlines bureaucracy, accelerates innovation, strongly protects Medicare, and always protects patients with pre-existing conditions. Nothing new. Nothing new out of all of that. Nothing new. Thank you. By contrast, the Democrat Party is pushing a socialist nightmare. Their plans will result in rationing care, denying choice, putting Americans on wait lists, driving the best doctors out of medicine permanently, and delaying lives. Over 130 Congress, including Senator Harris, have endorsed legislation to out. Coming back. Oh, come on. All right, we're gonna we're gonna switch over to Fox here so we can watch this, and we'll go back. Uh, looks like the internet is getting slightly better. So. No, it's not the router. We've got a really good router. Find here, join live. Are we there? Let's go back. It, it's the internet at this uh, property, and I am eternally so I'm okay with it. Uh, come on. Come on. Hi, Kim. Uh, look, <clears throat> looks like the output is getting better. I'm not. I'm not going to say anything because it'll crash. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to throttle this way back. Your picture's going to get blurry, but it's better than not having anything. Circumstances, because I think this... Okay. Uh, are you guys not sure? I do believe he will win if we don't give an inch, and if we are as focused and relent... They're not. Are they not showing the... It's not showing the presidential announcement on health care. Deductibles were a disaster. Patients had no choice. You couldn't keep your doctor. But by far the worst part of Obamacare was this thing called the individual mandate. As part of our largest ever tax cut in the history of the United States, we put in a provision to kill this worst provision of Obamacare, the individual mandate. It was a disaster, and it was really the essence of Obamacare. It was not the essence of Obamacare. It made you pay a tremendous amount of money in order to not have to pay for health insurance. Think of that. You had to pay a fortune in order not to have health insurance. It wasn't fortune. It was really terrible and so unfair to so many destroyed families. We were able to terminate no, the individual we mandate, but kept it did the provision not protecting families. patients with pre-existing conditions it would not have been that particular law would never have been signed if it were otherwise obamacare is no longer what? obamacare as we worked to what not have to pay insurance think of that you had to pay a fortune in order to terminate the individual mandate but kept the provision protecting patients with pre-existing conditions it would 
not have been that particular law would never have been signed if it were otherwise. Obamacare is no longer Obamacare. As we worked on it and managed it. it very well, we stabilized it and got premiums down very substantially. That was Alex and that was Seema, and you did a fantastic job. But it's still unacceptable to me because it's too expensive and doesn't really do the job as well as we could have. So what we have now is a much better plan Okay. It is no longer Obamacare because we've gotten rid of the worst part of it, the individual nope, mandate. Still have, still has and made Obamacare. It much less I have expensive. Obamacare. A lot of that was through good management. We manage it properly. No, we have tremendous you, you people working on it. Catastrophic plans. Simultaneously with all of this, that nobody is buying. We are joining in a lawsuit to end this ill-conceived plan. I'm in court to terminate this. But I uh, thought it was already over. Really, really terrible situation if you we just win said it was gone we will have a better and expensive plan that will always put conditions and that plan if is we lose what we have now is better than the original the original version of obamacare by far much better oh now we're back Okay, I paused it for you. Uh, I, I don't know what's going on, guys. I apologize, but here we go. On the individual market, starting next month, more than 90% of the counties will have multiple options to choose from, which is... They will be catastrophic plans. ...really some difference. Under our plan, you'll have the freedom to shop for the option that is right for you and your family. These options include new affordable choices that cost up to 60% less than Obamacare. Catastrophic. Think of 60% less. Uh, we already have this, by the way. He already put in catastrophic plans, and nobody's buying them because they're terrible. For example, we're opening up short-term plans that are much cheaper than Obamacare. Catastrophic. And that can be customized to your individual needs. We're also offering association health plans that allow small businesses to pool together. And All right, we're yeah, we already have those. We're gonna so continue to monitor uh, what the President of the United States is saying. He's out. Okay, even Wolf is uh, cutting away from this. Let's see if anybody else is covering it. Uh, nobody else is covering it. Let's go back to C-SPAN, see if we can watch from the beginning and jump ahead. Uh, let's see, I gotta make Wolf smaller. Uh, smaller Wolf and bring me back to c-span here we go uh let me refresh this page sorry about the internet guys i i have no control over there but uh okay watch from beginning we can do this let's go and we'll try and get close to where we were for ads but they're taking ads and every time you see an ad just think that your drug prices are coming down i now understand why other politicians wouldn't do it because okay Go ahead. That's the beginning. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, the president of here. the United States. For years, patients have been shocked to receive unexpected bills for thousands of dollars. Oh, this is the page. Uh, yeah, let's do that. That's a good good idea. Hold on. I bet you the White House is streaming this. We'll trust YouTube. Okay, but they're they're not the the. Uh, let's see, America's first health care plan. Okay, We're here we go. World. This is the White House feed. So if Germany's paying 10 cents, okay, we're going to pay $2. And that can be customized to your individual needs. Oh, we're also offering we were. association health plans that allow small businesses to pool together and offer more affordable policies to them. We already have this. He already instituted this options. a couple of years ago. No that one's didn't buying this before we came into office. Nope. Yeah. And through a massive expansion of health reimbursement arrangements, Millions of Americans will be able to shop for a plan of their choice on the individual market and then have their employer cover the full cost. Furthermore, I'll work to make individual health care premiums fully tax deductible. That will be a big difference. Right. He will work towards it, but it has to be approved by Congress. Through these and other reforms, we're putting American patients back in charge and we're putting them first. My plan will also revolutionize access to telehealth. 
It's something that really has taken off uh, during the pandemic. Yeah, already a thing. It's taken off like a rocket ship. It's increased close to 9,000 percent. Nobody was using it. And when we had the pandemic, they started using it. Then they started really liking it. Then it started getting better and better. Bill, now it's up to 9,000 percent. Who would think that, right? One of the few of the things pandemic? that we got from this yeah. disaster yeah. came from China. When we rapidly expanded its availability for Medicare beneficiaries during the pandemic, the number of telehealth users increased so incredibly to 14,000 a week. It was uh, 1.7 million. It was increasing at levels that nobody's ever seen before in just about any kind of a program. This is the future of health care. We will ensure all Americans have the freedom to consult with doctors from the safety and convenience of their homes. The second pillar of my plan is that's what you can do now. Lower costs for families and seniors, lower cost. With this catastrophic plans. For years, patients have been shocked to receive unexpected Ooh. bills for thousands of dollars. For years, patients have been shocked okay. to receive unexpected bills for thousands of dollars in medical services they never agreed to. The first America First Healthcare Plan bans this deeply unfair practice. We will end surprise medical billing. The days of ripping off American patients are over. My plan also includes the vital reform of price transparency. And Trice transparency is great for the great doctors, the good doctors. I, I wish I knew how much Trice were. And Trice transparency is great for the great doctors, the good doctors, and it's also great for the great and good hospitals. That's where it's really fantastic for them, too, in addition, obviously, to the patients. For the first time ever, we will create true competition in health care. Both hospitals and insurance companies will be required to post all of their prices online. This transformative policy will allow you to see your exact out-of-pocket costs before you go for treatment, making it easy to shop for the best price. Costs will come way down. Some people think this will have a bigger impact than health care itself. It's a it tremendous thing. It no won't. matter where it's been put, it's been a service and it's it's worked miracles. It's been brilliant for patients. Next time, taking on the lobbyists and the special interests to lower the price of prescription drugs. For years, American patients have subsidized socialist nations. And you know that uh, we talk about it all the time. Congress, they come over. We've yeah, been you talking already did about this in it July. for a long time. They've been talking about it for years. They know the problem, but we've been subsidizing socialist nations and others by paying the highest drug prices in the world by far. And yet we're the yeah. largest purchaser of prescription drugs by right. far. And this is all while countries got away with paying so much less, so much less, incredibly less. Under my plan, we will pay the exact same price as other countries. That's at the lowest level. So we will be matching the lowest price with what's now many times the highest price and we won't pay a penny more. What will happen is the lower prices will come up a little bit, but you'll get discounts of 40, 50, 60, 80, 90, who knows, percent numbers that you wouldn't even believe. I don't. And we were the only ones uh, in 52 years to bring drug prices down. The last year they went down, as you know. By 1% in 2018 and not for consumers. But that was before this. They went down just a little bit, but just a little bit was the only time in 52 years. Now they're going to go down massively. Favored nations. This will lead to a very Favored large nations. savings this will for lead to American families and plummeting drug prices. They will plummet. The Obama-Biden administration caved to Big Pharma and allowed drug prices to explode. The only bad part about this transaction is that they are advertising like crazy. Make sure you don't elect Trump. And all it means is that your drug prices are coming down. So it's uh, it's incredible. They have unlimited money for ads, but they're taking ads. And every time you see an ad, 
just think that your drug prices are coming down. I now I understand why other politicians wouldn't do it, because it was a very easy thing to do. But it took a certain amount of courage, I will say that. So it means that I'm taking on Big Pharma like never before. Nobody's done this before. They understood favored nations. Favored nations is you get the best price as the lowest, no matter where it is anywhere in the world. So if Germany's paying 10 cents for a bill and we're paying two and a half dollars for the same exact bill from the same place, same plant, same genius scientist, same everything, same laboratory, uh, we get the same price as they do. Are you talking about numbers that are unthinkable, favored nations laws. So it's really something, and they're attacking me viciously. We know that. And uh, they're attacking me, really, because I'm fighting for you. But it's worth the fight. It's worth the fight. I think people are going to have it. And I, I can say this, I think. I don't think it's confidential. Uh, our chief of staff is here, Mark Meadows, from a very great state known as North Carolina. Yeah, happens to come from North Carolina. That's uh, good stuff. He wanted to be here for that reason, probably more than even listening to this, because you've heard it. But Mark will tell you that Big Pharma is calling and negotiating and negotiating, and they want to make a deal. And there's a deal somewhere, but it's uh, it's something that's taking place right now. So they're negotiating. but. This is where we are, and they're negotiating for one reason. Before that, they wouldn't even think about negotiating with any other administration. They would uh, — they cannot believe this is actually happening. And if we can make a deal, we will. But Mark, you're negotiating literally as we speak, right? So if he doesn't make a no, deal — No, not literally. Mark, he's not Mark literally Gellar. negotiating okay. right now. He's watching your speech. So that's great. Now, Mark is a real pro at this, understands it. Complicated business, uh, but he understands it very well. Today, my administration's taking action on every piece of the executive order I signed on prescription drug importation in July. The American people pay an average of over — listen to this — three times more for medicine than Canadians. Yeah. So you could be two feet they away have socialized on each side of the border. They have socialized medicine. Three times medicine. more. Yeah. And that's the way it is. And it is, because they have socialized medicine. far more than many other countries. Everybody has coverage. My plan will allow states, wholesalers, and pharmacies to do something. Career politicians have promised for decades, because it was very simple as an idea, but never delivered. We will finally allow the safe and legal importation of prescription drugs from Canada. So this means... Or just go to socialized medicine. So this means a state or whatever can go to Canada and buy your drugs for a fraction of the price that they're charging right now. I used Massive to do that. When my mom was terminally ill, I would drive across the border numbers. to buy drugs. Florida wants to do it. Colorado wants to do it. Many states want to do it. And they I've will done be it. doing it. But that's still higher than the favored nations. So as favored nations kicks in, I think that probably beats everybody, no matter it, where you are. Once no favored nation kicks in, it this won't will be. be a game changer for American seniors. And by allowing you to do this through Canada, uh, we're doing it very, very quickly. So it goes very fast. Yeah, how about just being socialized medicine? Effect as of today. Is that fast enough? I think. Can we so. just copy think? the Canadian plan? And there's issues with it. But I'm you can remedy those issues. The America First health care plan includes another historic provision to benefit there's, our There's still no health care plan here. Under my plan, 33 million Medicare beneficiaries will soon receive a card in the mail containing $200 that they can use to help pay for prescription drugs. Nobody's seen this before. These cards are incredible. The cards will be mailed out in coming weeks. I will always take care of our wonderful senior citizens. Still not a plan. Uh, Joe Biden won't be doing this. What is that face? And this is also partially because of the tremendous money that we're going to be saving with the favored nations and various uh, So for favored nations, what he's calling favored nations, which is not favored nations, it's not health favored nations, he's just calling this favored nations, that if any nation has a lower price for a drug, the uh, United States gets to pay that price. And the pharmacy companies just have to cooperate and give it at that cost. That's his vision. And he thinks that the price for Germany for this 10-cent pill will go up and our price will go down 
and they'll meet somewhere in the middle. And then everybody on the planet will be paying the same cost per pill. That's his vision of how this will work. And he's calling it favored, most favored nation, that America will be the most favored nation, even though America is by far the richest nation. And there's a number of uh, cogs at play. But it, that that is something that, yeah, we pay way too much for our pharmaceuticals. We have because the pharmacy, uh, the pharmacy lobby is the biggest lobby there is. That, and that's why. That's all there is to it. Uh, Medicare can't literally legally can't negotiate uh, because Congress says it can't. It's it's absolutely ridiculous. So the things that we've done, but th this doesn't fix that, and it will drive up the cost uh, as well. Which is what what the pharmacy companies, if there there are some ads, I haven't seen any, but we went and watched a couple of. We had to find them. Uh, are attacking Trump, and the Congressional Budget Office has said yes. The, this will drive up the price for the actual plans. So. We've approved more affordable generic drugs than any administration in history. I had no idea. Yeah, every administration approves more generic drugs than the last one because more drugs are invented all the time and therefore more drugs become generic after a certain number of years. So yes, and the next administration, no matter who it is, will approve more generic drugs than yours. That's just how drugs work. No idea, but I had had many uh, doctors who I have great respect for, by the way, come to me and yeah. I said, well, what's the difference between this and this? One is a very well-known name. One is just a pill in a box. The, they're asking you this? The doctors are asking you this? Did he say they come to him and ask him? In Go this ahead. and this, one is respect for you. I had no idea, but I had had Many uh, doctors who I have great respect for, by the way, come to me and I say, well, what's the difference between oh, this and this? One is a very well-known name. One is just a pill. In a he had no idea before he was president what generic drugs were? Bottle with no tag on it. And they said zero. Don't, don't take pills out of bottles with no tags on them. Do not do that. Every bottle of medication has to have a tag on it. Although, if he's been taking pills from a tagless bottle, it explains a lot. Oh, I said, must be a little bit better, right? The name Zero. And yet, the name brand will cost five and even ten times more money than the generic. So, we've approved more generic drugs than anybody at a rapid pace, too. We're also requiring that low income patients receive the benefits of government discounts on insulin and the EpiPen, and that, you know, that is a big, uh, that is a big deal. That is a big deal. Insulin is one of the most common medicines for seniors. Yeah, it is a big deal. And this is something that uh, SEMA worked on so hard. Insulin prices soared under the last administration, like you wouldn't believe, right, SEMA? Under my plan, hundreds of thousands of Medicare patients will see their insulin costs capped at just $35 a month. That's a 66% cost reduction. Or, or just go and to socialized medicine so they don't have to pay that. They're seniors. Available on over 1,600 Medicare plans that seniors can begin signing up for starting October 1st. And under certain circumstances, what? summer, it's what did you just say? up for starting 1,600. And this feature will be avail available on over 1,600 Medicare plans that seniors... There are over 1,600 Medicare plans? You're asking seniors to choose between 1,600 Medicare plans? My grandmother can't decide between three jars of peanut butter. And they're all the same brand. Because she's dead. Sad story. I didn't want to go there, but I tried to be real with you people. That's what you deserve can begin signing up for starting October 1st. And under certain circumstances, Seema, it's literally almost free. This uh, insulin, which they were just ripping you on, is close to being free, even lower than the $35 a month. So you did a fantastic job in that. Thank you very much. And Seema would come to my office, sir, I have something so exciting. She worked on that for a long time and getting that done, but it was, it is exciting. If this all comes to fruition and I lose my Obamacare, I am never calling it the America First health care plan. As opposed to Belize First. If you need insulin, a lot of people will go. 
Uh, insulin has come down in cost already. Actually, this is an effective plan. It's basically subsidizing insulin, which is socialism. Which is good when it comes to Medicare. Yeah, that's what it is. Going without it, they just couldn't afford it. Now they can definitely afford it. We'll accelerate our relentless effort to save seniors money on their premiums. Since I took office, we reduced Medicare Part D premiums by 12 percent. Medicare Advantage premiums are also down dramatically, a 44 percent reduction in North Carolina. It's good. I have not fact-checked that. This is the first time I'm hearing these. 43 percent lower in Pennsylvania and a 54% lower price in Michigan. So that's something. And we have them all over the country. All over the country, there are numbers just like that. We'll ensure that all seniors pay the same price for the same service, whether at a hospital, a surgery center, or a doctor's office. This will save seniors billions and billions of dollars a year. We're talking about the billions and it also saves our government a lot of money, but will save our senior citizens billions of dollars a year. Cool. Still not a health care plan. Fantastic job. We're putting into place the largest package of saving for seniors of any administration in history. No administration is even close to what we've done. And I've said it, having to do much more than even health care. Well, at one point, Medicare and Medicaid didn't exist. So, yes, other administrations have done more. But, I mean, with the possible exception of Abraham Lincoln. There's no administration in its first three and a half years that's done anywhere close to the things we've done. And I never even get criticized for saying it. That must mean it's true, right, my congressman and my great senator? I guess he doesn't Under watch the show, Under the Democrat guys. plan, costs will... It's not my show. It's your show. It's your show, guys. Hey, if you'd like to be part of this, if you'd like to support this broadcast and make it your show, get your name at the end, uh, go to KevinLeeFather.com or just send me some money. PayPal.me slash KevinLeeDad. Venmo, Kevin-Williams-1579 or Fiverr. Skyrocket. Our seniors will lose the benefits they paid into their entire, I mean, they've been paying for their entire lives. Tremendous yeah. amounts of money, all to finance socialism and open borders. You mean like the health care plan? I mean, we're just helping other countries, countries that aren't even friends of ours. But we help yeah. our friends and we help uh, socialism uh. all over the world. And we hurt our people and we're not doing that any longer. We also we also support the con countries that aren't socialisms. <laughs> as long as I'm president. No one will lay a hand on your Medicare. Your Medicare is going to be safe and it's going to be solid. Says the guy who says he's going to cut the payroll tax that pays for Medicare. Uh, yeah, user Blinker has a good point. This is now the ninth time that President Trump has rolled out health care. So that's good. The final pillar of America First health care plan is better. We got more pillars? Wasn't that already three? Better care. Be it's better care for better care. patients. Still not a health care plan. Still literally nothing I can sign up for. The historic action I'm taking today includes the first ever executive order to affirm it is the official policy of the United States government to protect patients with pre-existing conditions. So we're making that official. Not a plan. We're putting it down in a stand. Because our opponents, the Democrats, like to constantly talk about it, and yet pre-existing conditions are much safer with us than they are with them. And now we have it affirmed. Condition. So we're making that official. We're putting it down in a stamp. We're putting it down in a stamp? Is that what he said? We're putting it down in a stamp? Hold because on. our opponents, the United States government, to protect patients with pre-existing conditions. So we're making that official. We're putting it down in a stand because our opponents, the Democrats, like to constantly talk about it, and yet pre-existing conditions are much safer. We're putting it down in the staff is what close captions thought it was. We're, did did anybody hear that? Does anybody know he, what he's talking about? We're putting it down in a what? With us than they are 
with them, and now we have it affirmed. This is affirmed, signed, and done, so we can put that to rest. They'll say it anyway because it's disinformation. Disinformation. Same thing goes for Social Security. You remember during the last campaign four years ago, they kept saying I was going to destroy Social Security. I made Social Security stronger, better. They will be the ones that destroy Social Security because they're going to destroy our country. They will destroy our economy. So Social Security, nothing happened. I keep saying, whatever happened to Social Security? Well, you cut the payroll tax and you're saying you're going to permanently repeal the payroll tax. Sorry, you deferred the payroll tax. And you say if you win, then you're going to get everybody that money that you've deferred, uh, which is bribery. But that's how Social Security gets its money primarily. So I don't know about this better, stronger, faster than ever before. We have the technology to build the world's first bionic man. I don't get any of that. Remember, he is going to immediately attack. No, just the opposite. We're putting it down in stamp. Your Social Security is 100 percent with me, but it's not 100 percent with them. Any health care reform legislation. That I want my Social Security to be 110 percent with somebody. That's what I want. That comes to my desk from Congress must protect the pre-existing conditions or I won't sign it. And I made that pledge and I made that pledge last week. But now I'm making it in writing. We're putting it down and we have. Yeah, but that's that's what you're just admitting. You don't have a plan. This is supposed to be a America first health care plan. And now you're saying when a plan comes to you from Congress, you're going to not sign it unless it has the pre-existing condition. Great. Show us the plan part. We have it signed and we have it sealed. This is the worst plan rally I have ever seen. The new Democrat lie is that they will cover pre-existing conditions, but in truth, the social... Did you guys get it? The plan rally? Like, like, clan rally? Because healthcare? <laughs> Good night, folks. Stiff your waitress. Socialist takeover, economic I'm shutdown. I'm putting it down. I'm putting it down in stamp. About if you look at this state, frankly, where you have Democrat governors, Democrat leaders, uh, those sta those states are in very, very bad shape with all of their shutdowns. Pennsylvania, you take a look at what's going on in Pennsylvania with the shutdown. We just won a big court case where a judge, a great federal judge, ruled it unconstitutional what they were doing. They're hurting people. There's damage on the other side of a shutdown. People don't realize with suicides and uh, drug use and all. Yeah, you know how 200,000 people have killed themselves. All of the alcohol, it's a terrible thing that happens. And Hey, you buy alcohol, that's a lot of taxes that goes towards the government. That is supporting the state governments, my friend. Don't knock it. And, uh, Michigan's another state. The shutdown is very severe. By the way, on November 4th, I'm sure everything will be open. They'll announce on the evening of November. <laughs> he thinks that because he thinks like that. <laughs> November 3rd, that we're opening up. Unless these unsolicited ballots don't come in for weeks and weeks and weeks. You know, they want them to uh, come in over a long period of time. It's going to be a very interesting day. November 3rd, it's going to be a very interesting day. And coverage for illegal immigrants will collapse our economy will collapse under their system and uh, make your healthcare system totally insolvent. You know that as great doctors and people that do this, you know that what they're doing is socialized medicine and it's not acceptable. It's going to be a disaster in terms of quality and cost. It'll as opposed to subsidizing the cost of medication, which is not socialism. It'll ruin our country. It's subsidized. Under their plan, so you'll dietism. lose your doctor again, and you will lose your coverage. You will lose everything having to do with what we're talking about on my watch. I will never let the radical left take away your health care. You'll always have health care. You've literally tried to take away my health care multiple times. And then even though you didn't take away my health care, you claim that you've taken away my health care because of individual mandate. Because you just said you just said it like 20 minutes ago. The America, I, I'm, I'm sure, and it's it's a it's a valid point 
that any during any kind of economic recession or a year like 2020, which is so hopeless for so many people, or people who've lost loved ones to COVID, you're going to have an increased suicide rate. You're going to have naturally uh, a, a number of heart attacks that happen because of uh, what's called takotsobu heart attacks. When you lose somebody, uh, it causes increased stress, and that stress can cause uh, problems in the heart that cause strokes, etc. So you often hear about old couples, one dies, and then a few days later or a couple of months later, the other one dies uh, because your, little, your heart breaks. It's very sad. Uh, and the Japanese call it takosobu because that's the box that an octopus is caught in, and the octopus makes itself too big to get out of the box. So your heart becomes too big and swollen, to, and you die not really part of healthcare. So basically what I'm saying is don't care about anybody because then you're just going to kill yourself. The first healthcare plan will deliver another long-awaited reform. We will put you in control of your own medical records. Will we... Good. Has anyone ever had a problem getting their medical records? Raise your hand. We'll require doctors to make your records available electronically and you'll own them and you'll control them yeah. and they will be portable and yeah. You'll be able to work seamlessly with all of your medical providers. It'll make right. your life a lot easier. Yeah. Much, much easier. That's lit literally what happens right now. Does it, can anybody not get their records electronically? <laughs> is is anyone living, I don't know, in Antarctica? Right? Are there any Americans in Antarctica right now and they don't have access to... I shouldn't, because someone's watching right now from Antarctica. And he's like, we've had electronic medical records for 20 years. They probably do. Actually, they 100% do because it's all military down there. The previous administration, yeah, led by Sleepy Joe Biden, no, spent 30. It was led by Obama. He was the president. 35 billion dollars and failed to get it done. You know that 35 billion dollars. Oh, what did he Where know? they failed, we are delivering to give critically ill patients access to life-saving treatment. I also signed Right to Try. You know what Right to Try is. Yeah. I'm very, yeah. to me. That's a state's issue, by the way. The first year, the federal Right to Try was put into place, uh, which is great. Uh, two people, two people utilized federal Right to Try because the states all have, uh, predominantly have Right to Try already. Right to Try is, is so great. Yeah. It's so great. And what I think I'd like to do, I'll do it really quickly. I'm going to run through just a quick list of accomplishments that we've done. Good. And, you know, as part of the health care plan, we've really become the health care party, the Republican Party. And nobody <laughs> knows that. The, the news doesn't talk about even the, the audience has been wholeheartedly. Yeah, this whole time. And then listen, we've really become the health care party. And the, listen to the applause here. The Republican Party. And nobody knows that. The, the news doesn't talk. Sooner we clap, the sooner we're out of here, kids. About the Republican Party, and nobody knows that. The, the news doesn't talk about it. But I'm going to just say, uh, I mean, it's a list of things that we've done. And Are you really? It'll go quickly, but I just thought I'd take it out. I said, you know, I'd like to read that to the audience of professionals today. Uh -huh. And this is just a partial list. Oh. We repealed the individual mandate, eliminated Obamacare's health insurance, medical device, and the Cadillac taxes. That's uh -huh. a big deal. Yeah. People forget all of this. They say, I wonder who did that. Could it have been Joe Biden? He doesn't know what it is. Um, has anyone sat around the kitchen table talking with their family and friends saying, you know what? The uh, tax on medical devices that was used to supplement insurance for 35 million people. Who did that? Who, who got rid of that? Who repealed that? Who was that? Was that? I'm sure you've all had this conversation. Me, usually on the bus with a stranger. Expanded association health plans. Plan rally. Increased availability of short-term limited duration plans. Catastrophic plans. And again, nobody is buying those. Literally, zero people. It's like, why would I, what? What does it cover? Nothing. I'll pass. Expanded health reimbursement arrangements. Big deal. Here, here's the thing. Obamacare has problems. Obamacare has a lot of problems. Everything in this country in terms of a health care plan is Swiss cheese. And it needs to be addressed and it needs to be fixed universally. 
for the last little while since not working at all, I've been on Obamacare. And I've been on Obamacare before. And I've used Obamacare when I wasn't on uh, Medicare or Medi Medicaid uh, to choose plans that fit my lifestyle. And I've been able to keep my doctor. And uh, if you don't make any money, like right now, my health care is awesome. It's fantastic, whereas before I couldn't get health care at all. Zero. Zip. So, improvement, but we've still got a long way to go. There's those donut people who are called donut people because they make too much and they eat too many donuts. I think that's why. But anyway, yes, we need absolutely need new health care plans in this country or a just a single health care plan. This is not a health care plan. He's already said if Congress comes to him with a health care plan, He'll sign it if it's got uh, the pre-existing condition thing in it. Lowered prescription drug prices, and you will see them at a level that you will never have. No, they, they were not uh, lowered for consumers. You'll never see this again. They will go down so low. He, he subsidized insulin. And as I said, we had the largest annual decrease. We had the only decrease over a 52-year period. More generic prescriptions approved, savings America, saving America, and that's the is this just all healthcare stuff? He's just going to repeat what he just said for half an hour? Made it $2.6 billion in the first eight. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Linda. Most of the things Obamacare has problems with were because the Republicans would not let them happen. Uh, so there's just amendment after amendment. Uh, and really, uh, if not for Olympia Snow, a Republican voting to let it out of committee in the Senate, we don't have Obamacare today. She was the only Republican, the only Republican who wanted me to have health care. 18 months of the administration alone. So in 18 months, we saved 2.6 billion with generic drugs. Signed four executive orders to lower prescription drug prices. Signed legislation. Yeah, he did that, but has anyone seen their drug prices go lower? Banning pharmacy gag clauses. Does that make sense to you? It doesn't make sense to you because you're not going to explain it. I mean, what, what people were under and what even the pharmacists had to do was it made them, it was embarrassing to them took executive action to ensure price. Do you want to do you want to explain them to the people's? No. OK. How the pharmacists weren't allowed to mention that they were cheaper alternatives under certain health care plans. No. OK. Transparency in health care. That'll be one of the biggest things. And most people have no idea what it means. Uh, price transparency. What could that mean? I said some people said that's bigger than health. By the way, you can find out the price of what you're paying. You just just ask. It's also on the bills. Healthcare required hospitals to post standard prices on the internet, modernize and strengthen Medicare with more options, more benefits, and lower premiums substantially. Improve kidney care, such a big deal, with more transplants and better treatment. Kidney that's good. Care. I, I don't know what he did to having to do with that, but that's good. So tough for people with a problem. Yeah. Again, the applause is like, what did he do with kidney? What? Because doctors would be intensely interested in that if it is an audience of doctors. Uh, typically, what they do is they send out uh, invites to the local Republican Party when they do events like this. So we make sure that it's all Trump supporters, as opposed to when he went to uh, visit uh, the Supreme Court in honor of Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, this morning. You know, the incompetent judge and uh, the crowd watching him with his little mask on uh, up on the steps of the Supreme Court building. Uh, chanted, uh, vote him out. So. Very substantially lowered the price of insulin, as we said, for our seniors. Invested in advances in generic therapy for. Uh, Allison, your husband has no health insurance. What state are you in? It, you're in uh, New Jersey. Aren't you out there in Hackensack? Ack, 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 ack. You ought to know, bud. What if your husband has a heart attack? Ack, 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 ack. Sickle cell disease. Big thing. Big thing. Big, big, thing. big thing. Sickle cell. Launched big a $500 thing. million dollar initiative to find cures for childhood cancers. $500 million. Yeah. And thereby all cancers. Combated drug demand. Uh, doesn't New Jersey, can he just go on the uh, Obamacare? Just go on the exchange and get himself, uh, oh, you probably make too much money for the free stuff, but you'll get subsidies. He should have health insurance. I, I haven't heard any talk of New Jersey being this place where you couldn't get it. We uh, really went very, very strong on drug demand and the opioid crisis with expanded access to medication-assisted treatment and life-saving naloxone.
Naloxone. Naloxone? Opioid. Naloxone. <laughs> Naloxone, which you take from Le Poisson. Le Poisson. He 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 ho ho. How I love to Prescribed chat. Prescribed decrease by over 35%. So if you look at uh, the opioid, obviously, horror show. It decreased by over 35% since January of 2017. We've worked very, very hard on that. Launched findtreatment.gov to connect those with substance abuse disorder to treatment. We have an incredible situation. It's findtreatment.gov. Passed right to try to give critically ill patients access to life-saving cures where it hasn't been approved yet by the FDA. Incredible. And, and by the way, Many of you know what that has meant. We have had some... Oh! Naloxone is just Narcan. Why? Why did they give him... Why did they give him that word? Naloxone. It's Narcan. Examples of success... Which, by the way, uh, Republican governors, some of them, including Paul up in Maine, would not allow uh, their uh, emergency first responders to carry Narcan, which can, you know, if you've got yourself a little overdose... The Narcan will actually bring you back to life. Uh, but several Republican governors would not allow that to happen. But uh, Nalexon. Test that on right to. Remdy Try that have been amazing. Launched an initiative to end AIDS, HIV, AIDS in America. We think in six years it will be largely eradicated. Who would have ever thought? And this could have. No such thing as largely eradicated. That's not, does makes no sense. Have started. That does not make no sense. Two years before I got there, but they chose not to do it. But we have, and we've launched the initiative. It's into its almost fourth year. Yeah. And uh, at the time we did it, it was going to be 10 years. At the end of 10 years, now six years, we're already down to six. It will largely... That's that's the way it works. You get 10 years, and then you, you're there for four years, and there's six years left. <laughs> President Trump is correct, ladies and gentlemen. Eradicate. AIDS, HIV AIDS in America. Who would have thought that? It's incredible. When I first heard about it, when I first heard about it, I said, why wouldn't they have started it early? But they didn't. Expanded access to- they, They've been working on eradicating AIDS for longer than Trump's administration. I, I can just promise you that. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna fact check it. Telehealth. By the way, that also started, that 10 year initiative started before Trump, so. It's probably five years. I don't even know. Especially in rural and underserved areas, telehealth. Signed historic VA choice legislation. Uh, by a, the way, the, the, the initiative is to get it down to 10%, not eradicate it, because they understand it's going to be very, very difficult to eradicate it completely. But to get it down to 10% is what the AIDS, AIDS initiative is. Big deal. That's a big deal, right? It's the real, it's the real choice, not the weak choice, the very, very weak, the choice that didn't mean anything. But it's been a tremendous success, and we just got a 91% approval rating from our vets, the highest we've ever had by, by a lot, the highest. And we also, while we're at it, we signed accountability, VA accountability. That's where people don't love our vets. If they don't take care of our vets, you couldn't do it. Signed in 2014 by Obama. Do anything about it. You have to, they'd have to live in hell with these vets, with, uh, with the people that we're supposed to be taking care of. And uh, we have a thing called VA accountability. They're accountable now. If they don't treat our vets great, if they don't take care of our vets, if they don't love our vets, our country, uh, we can fire them. We can say, you're fired. Um, we can fire them. We can say, you're fired. That's a big thing. So VA choice, VA accountability, took executive action to prevent veteran suicide and launched the 24-hour veteran hot... Uh, just looking at HIV.gov, the page has been completely rewritten to just like the CDC, just like the FDA approvals, etc. This This page is now just a Trump ad. Uh, God, it's so disturbing. We, we cannot trust our health. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say it. It's just, this is a very different, different page. Uh, oh, there's even a button that says positive spin. But it's all about President Trump. 
And apparently, they're giving him credit for saying it in the State of the Union, February 5th, 2019, which would be a year and a half, not four years. We got death spirals. Uh, okay, looks like we're back. I'll, I'll power through. We're almost done with this, guys. Regulation would extinguish the flame of excellence that makes America the center of scientific discovery, groundbreaking treatment, and life-saving cures. In our all-out war against the virus, we've lifted bureaucratic barriers and marshaled America's scientific, industrial, and technical brilliance. And we do have total brilliance. Some of it's in this room, by the way, in case you don't know. I will apply. It really is some of the people, right? Right, Bill? Some incredible people in this room. I'll apply the same determination to accelerate medical breakthroughs in all areas, including for Alzheimer's, diabetes, generic treatments for sickle cell disease, early detection of cancer, and much, much more. Already to improve care for Americans with kidney disease, we enable patients to receive at-home dialysis and we're investing in the creation of an artificial kidney. We're getting very close. And we introduce critical incentives to make more kidneys available for transplant, a change that will save tens of thousands of lives. What people have to go through with. Chris, there's nothing new. There's absolutely, there's, this is not a health care plan. In fact, at one point he even said, if Congress approaches me with a health care plan, I'm not going to sign it unless it has pre-existing co uh, condition coverage which is him admitting this is not a health care plan. Nothing he says today has been a health care plan. Kidney disease is incredible. It's incredible. They work so hard. I said, how do they do? They can live a long life, but it's so much work to do. How do they do? That they literally, one doctor told me that. That's what I said. They die of hard work. It's such a job to go and I guess dialysis, etc. It's such a hard job that they die of, of literally they die of just hard work. They, they don't literally die of hard work. It's not a, it's not a prognosis or a diagnosis it's or a, whatever the past tense of diagnosis is. It's, it's uh, incredible what we've done there and what we're doing. And uh, especially with some of the research that's been done, what we're coming up with, you'll be seeing it very soon, I believe. As we invest in the future, we will permanently bring our medical supply chains back home. Uh, Stephanie, that's a smoothie. A yogurt milkshake is a smoothie. Okay? Don't get it in your head you're having a milkshake. We will produce our medical supplies, pharmaceuticals, and treatments right here in the United States, right here in North Carolina. We're going to bring a lot of business, too. If you remember, Puerto Rico used to do it, and then they brought tax legislation that destroyed that whole thing. They all left, but they were very happy in Puerto Rico. Boy, you could have attacked Biden there. You just missed uh, missed the ball on that one. Puerto Rico, we're going to bring it back to Puerto Rico and many of our states that uh, that will be doing it. And North Carolina. My smoothie brings all the boys to the yard. Damn right. It's better than yours. Damn right. I see is on the list as being a very top one. So we're going to bring it back to North Carolina, the country. And we'll reverse the disastrous and heartless decision Joe Biden made in 1996 to shut down the pharmaceutical industry in uh, Puerto Rico. It took place in 19. Okay, so you brought it around because it's on the teleprompter quite a bit after you actually mentioned it. it would have been better if during that 1996 Biden shut down the whole Puerto Rico uh, industry. This was a very good industry. They were doing a fantastic job. And one day it was just literally gone. Biden shut it down with what he did with taxes. And it was uh, it was a disgrace, but we will bring it back. God damn, Biden was a powerful senator. Shutting down an entire territory. I know some of the facts, Kelly, and I'm good at looking like I make them, like I'm not making them up. Under our leadership, American medicine will make the biggest breakthroughs, the largest leaps, the most exciting strides, and the most outstanding discoveries. Before I sign a historic executive order, implement... Is that, that's a guarantee that under your leadership, they'll do all of that? Thanks to you? Thanks to you, dear leader. 
who shoots a 56. Presenting this ambitious agenda, let me introduce two Americans, great Americans, who will benefit from our policies. Julia Strathopoulos was born in Freeman Sheldon syndrome or with, with the Freeman Sheldon was born in Freedom Shelters. He, he thought he's such a, he can't read more than one word ahead. So he just assumes whatever else is coming up. She was born in Freedom Shelters Syndrome, which is the beer, the great state of syndrome. Sheldon syndrome, our policies. Yeah. Julia Strathopoulos yeah. was born in Freeman Sheldon Syndrome or with, with the Freeman Sheldon syndrome, which is tough, an extremely rare muscle and bone disorder. Under the previous administration, Julia's family saw their premiums on the individual market skyrocket to $3,000 a month and more. Her parents had to go without a health insurance just to afford coverage for their children. Since I was elected, their family's premiums have been slashed by more than 40 percent, and we're going down further. Really, that's a state issue, though. That's you got to talk to Syndrome about that. <laughs> Who's governor there in Syndrome? He's a Democrat governor. It's it's a mess. It's a mess. If the governor of Syndrome wanted to just solve the Medicare problem, he's calling a national guard, right? Calling a generic guard. And everyone is now covered, and Julia always has access to the doctor she needs. Julia, we are with. Does he have a like an LED light attached to the side of his face? Because <laughs> it is really, really bright compared to the rest of his orange. You, I don't know where you are, Julia. Where is Julia? Look wow. at that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you look great, Julia. Thank you. You do not. That's great. Thank you, Julia. It's a great story, but we're inspired by your courage. Thank you very much. Also with us is Sharon Leader, a financial planner from nearby Concord. After spending less than 24 hours in the- uh, Arm shaking their left arm. Can you go back, Kevin? You guys are like, you're like two minutes behind me, so I don't know how far I'd have to go back. The hospital and receiving a few basic tests, she received surprise bills that added up to $4,000. That's a lot of money. Despite having insurance, Sharon- Yeah, before Obamacare, I had insurance. I had insurance, catastrophic insurance, and my hospital bill, my share, came to $23,000. $23,000 without any surgery. Just four days lying in a bed, getting hooked up onto a lot of antibiotics. Granted, I did a lot of... So they give you a machine. You can press the button every seven minutes with the Dilaudid, which is an opioid. And uh, I hotwired the machine so I could just press it whenever. So that explains the $23,000. That's the street price, though. Those days will soon be over because we'll end surprise medical building once and for all. Where is Sharon? Hi, Sharon. That's why they call it surprise building. She got home and she was surprised. They sent yeah. you the bill. You opened it up. You thought it was going to be twenty-five dollars, and it was that a little more correct. than that. Right? Yeah, good that's correct. Good job, well, taking Donald. Care of it. Thank you very much. Yeah. We're standing up for our people. We're standing well, up to yeah. special interests. Oh, yeah. We're taking on the powerful lobbyists. We're stopping the yeah. radical socialists and communists. To be honest with you, I think we've gone as a little bit above socialism or below it, if you want to call it that way. Okay. But uh, we are standing up to both, whichever one you want to choose. All right. And we are fighting for... None of that means anything. It's all metaphors, and you don't understand metaphors. So, yeah, go ahead and stand on up. For the incredible people of North Carolina, the incredible people, the people I love. I love the people. We named, uh, as you know, my grandchild is named Carolina. So. <laughs> beautiful Carolina, my grand most beautiful. And another granddaughter named Dakota. Dakota. And another of my grandson named Syndrome. Just, we're very patriotic. Beautiful child. But we're providing better care and more choice at a lower cost, substantially lower cost. We're delivering a healthier, safer, brighter, and more prosperous future for every citizen in our magnificent land because we are proudly putting America first. That hasn't happened for a long time. In terms of health health care plans, yes, that is correct. 
No, nobody, nobody ever has ever thought, you know what? How can we make this healthcare plan that isn't a plan that doesn't actually have access to medication with it, that doesn't allow anyone to sign up for a plan? How can we make that more first-ish for America? How do we do that? Uh, socialism is basically government controls parts of the economy. Communists is everybody controls everything. Um, so it's a, which is government. Uh, so they're, they're very, they're different ideologies, but socialism is on the way to communism, uh, which is if you just take a, a left at uh, Frieden Sheldon, you'll get there. It's just outside, just beyond the state lines of syndrome. On behalf of all Americans, I will yep. now sign the executive order. I want to thank you all for... Does anybody remember what this executive order is? It is not up on the website. Let me confirm. Let me uh, let me see if they put it up there yet. Because typically what presidents do is they put it up just before they start. Uh, and here's an executive action. Uh, let's see. Uh, the only thing that's up there recently is from yesterday where Alan Robert Sousa of North Carolina to be Inspector General of the Intelligence Community. Hold on. They nominated Alan Robert Souza to be the Inspector General of the Intelligence Community. Alan Robert Souza is a former aide to Devin Nunes. You know, the guy who went to the White House to get the information and then left the White House and then said, I got to go back to the White House and give them the information that they just leaked to me. That Devin Nunes, who published the memo, the four-page memo, that showed that, in fact, the, the Russia investigation was predicated upon uh, George Papadopoulos getting drunk and talking to an Australian diplomat, which is a completely valid reason to start an investigation, according to the IG, who was then summarily fired by the president. He's now been replaced with an aide to that guy, Devin Nunes. That's where we are. What could possibly go right? For being here, God bless you, God. The, the guy who sued a fake cow, that Devin Nunes, Chris. Bless North Carolina and God bless America. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, sounds like a bunch of doctors. the book that's a lot of work I don't, I don't that's great I... what is the book and why is the book there hey, Julia. they are all wearing masks he is not a big one. all of the medical personnel wearing masks the president, who is tested regularly, but could have already caught it and been uh, and 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 fooled the tests uh, because he's within the first five days of the infection, not wearing a mask next to somebody who appears to be, and I don't know the syndrome, who appears to be not in full medical health, to use a technical term, not wearing a mask. I saw that, Marcy, a doctor who had a mask optional uh, clinic. I didn't know it was Florida. I thought it was Texas. But yeah, anyway, there was a, a doctor who said, yeah, don't worry about a wearing mask. You can wear a mask if you want in the in the waiting room, in the in the uh, in the office. That's fine. Uh, he died of covid. And some of his patients, I saw uh, an article in some of his patients. Like, oh, it's just so shocking. I just like, where am I going to go for a doctor now? You don't want to go to that doctor. I don't, he said something about an executive order earlier that didn't do anything, which is what his executive orders do. And again, it's not up on the website yet. So let me refresh one more time. And the crack staff, remember he gives him a D for public relations and one of the reasons why. We'll find out afterwards. Somebody, uh, somebody of one of the networks will have paid attention here. 
That's that's correct, Ka. Executive orders are not laws. And executive orders can be overturned by the next president at any time for any reason if it's done correctly. But Trump is so impo- incompetent that he couldn't overturn DACA. DACA should be, yeah, okay, sign this, we're done. But it was done so shoddily, those were the words the Supreme Court used, shoddily, uh, that it's still it's still standing. Uh, that, I'm guessing that's the little girl who has either the syndrome or the other person he mentioned. But uh, there was a, pre- a prescription price drop uh, of 1%, but consumers never saw that. The consumer price index includes the kickbacks to the pharmacies, etc. No, we've seen him sign things before. We'll have sometimes read it and say like, oh, that's nice. Oh, I didn't know we were doing that. Oh, that's nice. I, I do not know if that's a little girl. I don't know if, what syndrome that is, and it could be actually a full-grown woman. A grown woman, God bless her. I don't want to say anything, anything negative about anybody up on the stage right now. You will notice, though, that during the pandemic, the president is not wearing a mask. What do masks do? They protect others from you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Okay, and he stands there, double fist pump into his face, and that's that. Okay, so we got health care, everybody. Woo! I'm going to go ride a skateboard. I, I don't I don't know I don't know I don't I don't know uh yeah there was no licensed music before it was all patriotic stuff so I don't know but maybe he's maybe it's an America first thing maybe he doesn't want to pay the bills for the music I don't even know um okay so it's super hot in here um it is hold on I'll tell you guys. Oh, nobody cares how hot it is you can tell I'm sweating like a like a Trump. Um, so uh, let's see. Here's the pan. It was in my mouth. Here's another pan. I liked this one too. Oh, the Constitution was good times. Trump wore a mask around RBG's corpse, though he did. So he's he's certainly not giving it to her. She has a, an underlying condition in terms of lying under the ground. That's how that works. Uh, okay, um, guys, it's been a pleasure. This is exactly what we said was going to happen. No health care plan. Again, no actual plan in there. No health care plan. Nothing. No website I can go to to look up the different plans that are available. No nothing. He did say in there that they were going to, did he say try to? He said something about making efforts towards getting plans. So I'm going to count that as a win. Ah, <sighs> yeah, we are going into another heat wave, Stephanie. It's supposed to be like 100 degrees again by the end of the week. Uh, yeah. No, RGB will soon be covered with dirt. <sighs> and we're essentially burying the country at that point. Um, anyway, let me check one more time to see if the presidential actions have been updated with whatever this is. And uh, that's it. Okay, so... Uh, I gotta do like a, I gotta get ready for a dress rehearsal for the charity thing, um, and I'm doing that tomorrow. The charity thing is on October third, one month before the election. Booksandbricks.org. If you'd like to go ahead and go to booksandbricks.org now and donate, so that you don't have to worry about it on October third. Uh, you're welcome to share the link with others. I'm gonna show you guys booksandbricks.org, and I'm gonna show you guys where you can donate in my mom's name. If you go to donate today on the booksandbricks.org site or donate on your uh, your uh, phone, uh, just hit donate online now. And then the first thing that pops up there is the Reverend Donna Riley Williams Memorial Scholarship Fund. It's too long of a name, but that's my mom. So if you wanna donate into that, go ahead and donate into any of the funds. But I'm just, if some of you are asking, where can I donate in your mom's name? That's where, if you're outside the United States, you can donate via the PayPal link. And that is also, if you click the donate button, 
And for some reason, we're going to a US map now. Okay, good job, Kevin. Uh, let me go back and show you guys that. You go to Donate Today on the website, and it comes up, and there will be a PayPal Donate Now uh, button. So you can do that. Um, yeah, so guys, healthcare, fantastic. Uh, there's a Kaylee Macaroni press conference, which I didn't get a chance to cover earlier. May or may not get to that later today. Uh, and if I don't, so be it. I don't think we really missed anything. It's all the same now. Uh, just remember, guys. Where are you going? I hate this house! I hate this house! Kevin, thanks for that.